Hello YouTubers, I'm not an expert, and this is a follow-up video on my Vivo router plane. Uh, in the original video, I talked about the fact that the base plate is very small, and that makes it a little awkward to use over doing things like this, right? doing, a, doing the cheek of a tenon. Um, so I built a big plate for it out of quarter inch polycarbonate, and I found a little problem. Uh, making the plate was very easy. I just drilled a couple holes and countersunk them and put a couple of screws in. Uh, the holes in the body are a good size for quarter by 20. There's not a lot of room between the handle and the bolt, so um, no room for a washer even. A little modification, a little sander, you could probably cut that down. That all came out pretty good. The problem I found is when I went to test it, now my cheek is pretty deep. How deep is this cheek? It's a little more than half an inch. Um, I can't get that much extension out of it anymore. The quarter inch used up quite a bit of the travel. In fact, I measured this and it's only about three eighths of an inch that'll extend. Can you see that now? And then it bottoms out here. Turn that so you can see it. Bottoms out here. So the cutter really isn't long enough to do what I wanted, what I thought it could do. Now it's not the end of the world because I've got three eighths of an inch, which is the amount of extension you'd need for a normal half lap joint in a three quarter inch board. Mm, I'd like to have a little extra though. That's a little tight. I don't have any eighth inch uh, wood or uh, plastic to use handy. I'm gonna look around and see if I can find something. But that does change that a bit. Now with an eighth inch, I don't know if I could extend it out as far as this on the sides and still have it be stiff enough to really work, but it will, I think, fill the hole. So um, I'm gonna go try and find a piece of eighth inch plastic and see if I can make a base plate out of that. And then we'll see how much extension we really get, which I guess we're gonna get about half an inch, which would be much more useful because of course, you know, as I sharpen this, this is going to get shorter, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna run out. Of, we're just not going to have enough depth. So that's really interesting. I also noticed on eBay, I found one for twenty two bucks. So if you can live with the either the giant hole in the base plate, or you can live with the little bit of extension you're going to get left once you make a bigger base plate, still a pretty good deal. Uh, one YouTuber did ask me about the longevity. How long will it stay sharp? And I don't know. I haven't used it enough. Uh, it seems like it's reasonable, but if you're really going to be working all day, uh, you know, well, actually, I don't know how long the other ones will stay sharp either. The other brands, Stanley or Veritas or any of those, I don't know. Someone did say that the cutter, they tried to sharpen it and it was pretty hard. It took a long time to cut. So maybe it'll stay sharp. I don't know. It's not necessarily, not necessarily the same thing. So let me go see if I can find a piece of eighth inch and I'll try to make another plate out of a thinner piece. Ugh, gotta get those things countersunk into eighth inch. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'll see what I can do and I'll see if I can make a plate for it that's still good and uh, see if I can salvage this or if I'm gonna end up giving it a big thumbs down. Uh, it's certainly the cheapest thing on the market though. So right now it's still looking yeah, like it might have potential for somebody. We'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. Uh, through the magic of editing, I managed to go out and make out a plate real quick. Let's see how much depth I get with that at the maximum now. So we'll do it in inches and we'll say from here, that's about right, 0.47. So a little less than half an inch of extension with an eighth of an inch of this ABS plastic. So and that's down as far as that's gonna go, okay? So is that enough? Is a half an inch enough? Um, like I said, normally on a half lap joint on three quarter inch board, you only need three eighths of an inch. So it's, it gives you about an eighth of an inch that you can sh sharpen off of that. I think for a lot of people, that may be enough. I'll get that off of there. So it won't reach, it'll just barely reach the, the joint I created here. Let's uh, let's turn this wood down a little bit. Let's uh, put this in and knock it down. Um, okay, so let's see. So what that did, if you look at my earlier video, the problem was the tipping. Now I made this one a bit smaller than I did 
the quarter inch one. The quarter inch one I made really big because of the stiffness. But this ABS is pretty flexy. Look at that. You can see, can you see that bending? Okay, so a little bit of a compromise. It's better, but it's not great. Um, so would that work? Could I get in here and do this work? Hold fast. Go learn how to use those. Better. You know, yeah, I can, right? So is it acceptable? Uh, you decide. It's a, it's a bit of a drawback. I'm not thrilled with that. When I re didn't realize how little extension I could get. Because I think the ability to add the plate is uh, really kind of necessary because this plate is so small. Someone else asked about, like, uh, they mentioned in the comment that it could scratch. It's just a piece of steel. I think it'd be easy enough to deburr it. And I don't think that's going to be any more scratchy or not scratchy than any other brand if you treat it properly. I think that's okay. So, I don't know. Kind of a little down on it. But Vivor does make another plane, a uh, router plane, that has more like a Stanley-type vertical moving foot instead of a tooth. So I've ordered one. It was only about 33 bucks. It'll probably be $22 as soon as it arrives. But it's 33 right now. So I ordered one, and we will check that out when it arrives. Hopefully it's here in about a week. Uh, I also noticed there's a company called Cowrie Man that makes one that looks like this, but it appears to have a much longer cutter. But it's also $80. Once you're at $80, you're starting to look at the old Stanley copies like Tay Tools, which I think, you know, for another 30 bucks on top of that, probably worth looking at. Um, but interesting. So I'm probably not going to get a Cowrie Man one just to, just to see. I'm not that curious. Um, but the design's good. Uh, the cutter's just not long enough. Um, if you're a machinist, you could certainly make yourself a new cutter <laughs> if you wanted. I don't think it's worth all that. So this, it does, it reduces it a little bit. Right. I was going to make knobs for it. Maybe now I won't bother. Um, not that it matters to me. I don't really use this that much. And for most of what I use, it is long enough. It will work for cleaning out dados up to, uh, well, now, th you know, three eighths of an inch or so, half an inch, maybe almost. But you take this off, like if you're doing a dado, the small plate isn't a problem. It works fine. It's when you're going to go off the end where tipping and falling through that hole, because look how big that hole is. That's a problem. Um, so it's not going to work really good for doing tenon cheeks. And I saw my uh, video where I did a shoulder plane. I haven't really done a plane on the tenon cheeks yet, but I was just watching uh, Rob Cosman earlier today when he talked about doing that very thing. And he, he recommended a router plane for doing the cheeks. But you're going to need one that can get out here because these cheeks on a tenon can be two inches, two and a half. This isn't going to get you out there. Um, and it's too floppy. So that depth, how much depth you can get, kind of important. A um, little bit of a bummer here. Uh, not terrible. It's, it doesn't end this plane completely, but it certainly makes you think, well, I can afford to buy. Well, that's loose. I can afford to buy one that can do everything. Maybe because, uh, you know, it's 110 for the Tay Tools right now, I think. Um Stanley 71s, someone said they saw some for as little as $50 on eBay. Mm, I don't know. I'm a little, little bummed about this. I mean, it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that uh, maybe it's not a great investment. Maybe it's a tool you're going to buy and then say, oh, well, you know, a year from now, I'm going to have to replace it because I'm going to have a, a, you know, I'm going to start on a project I haven't thought of yet. And when I get to that project, you know, maybe, because maybe your project right now, this will work. And the project you come up with in a year, maybe it won't. And wouldn't you have been better off just buying one tool in the first place? Normally, I'm like, buy all the tools. But uh, yeah, all right. So a little down on the Vivo right now. Um, I don't think the quality of it's a problem. I think some of the, the design stuff just isn't thought through completely. A little longer cutter, you know, another half an inch of cutter would make this really awesome. In fact, if it had another half an inch of cutter, I'd be like, this is cool. But now that I realize that shortcoming, not the end of the world, but also eh, not that great, you know? And while it's really cheap and I love that, 
I'm, I'm kind of back to thinking maybe not, maybe not so hot. Um, but if you're on a real budget, it'll get the job done. You know, it's just maybe something else would do it better. All right. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in. I'll post this up as soon as I can, and uh, we'll check you out next time. See ya.